If you're a game developer, there's four key ways that you can make money from your game. You can sell your game for $60 retail, whether it be on Steam or a physical copy. And the price of $60 has been mostly unchanged for a very long time. The second way devs make money is microtransactions. When done right, people aren't too upset by microtransactions. It's just that most of the time, they're not done right. So people tend to hate them. But when they're done tastefully and they don't impact gameplay too much, they're generally accepted on a game by game basis. Good in-game purchases, bad in-game purchases. But there's two other less common ways that games make money. The first one is called incentivized behavior. That's basically a fancy way of saying that a game will offer you free rewards like in-game currencies or progression points in exchange for some sort of action from the player. Most commonly, this is done with ads. If you watch the ad in Candy Crush, you get an extra life. These are generally exclusive to mobile games. Mobile games are generally a lot more short form games and 99% of mobile gamers are casual players. So the chance that the company gets backlash for making you watch ads for in-game goodies is a lot lower in a mobile game than it would be if you did it in the next Madden 2K game. And advertisers love this sort of thing, because although marketing teams can see how many times an ad was shown to a person, they can never know how many people actually paid attention. But this sort of monetization scheme on a mobile game is pretty much guaranteed engagement with an advertisement, which cannot be achieved anywhere else. But the last way that companies make money is a lot less talked about, but far more common than you probably realize realize. In-game ads, or as the movie world has been calling it for the past 100 years, product placement. When a game literally takes money from a company to put a product in their game. This is far, far more common than you probably realize. The biggest and most famous example is actually fairly recent as an event. It's this. Fortnite Endgame. Hate to break it to all the Zoomers in the audience, but this is an advertisement. It's product placement. The details are not widely known, but there was some sort of mutual marketing agreement between Epic Games and Marvel Studios. Marvel gets to put their characters into Fortnite, and Epic Games gets to have Thor and Korg play Fortnite in Avengers Endgame. Thor, he's back. That kid on the TV just called me a dickhead again. Noob master. This seems like a win-win situation if I do say so myself, but there are so many examples of this over the years. My favourite one, I think, is Dole having a product placement in the Super Monkey Ball series. They're monkeys, they eat bananas, so there's bananas as collectibles all over every stage. So why not have those bananas be Dole bananas? It's free real estate. Maybe the association with the cute monkeys in the funny monkey game will make everyone forget that Dole was formerly known as Standard Fruit, one of two companies that had so much power and money that they hired a mercenary army to overthrow the government of Honduras and give themselves tax breaks. It's true, look it up. You'll never look at this happy face the same way ever again. But despite the history of running banana republics, this product placement is actually really good because it seems organic and natural. The association with monkeys and bananas makes a fruit company's product placement seem very understandable. The link between these two things makes sense to the consumer, so it makes sense for the brand. And a lot of other companies followed suit. If it seemed organic, they were willing to do it. Organic, like delicious Dole bananas. This video is sponsored by Dole like having Hot Wheels cars in Rocket League, or having skateboarding brands appear in skateboarding games like the Tony Hawk series. People don't mind these because they naturally integrate into a game without being too on the nose. They don't feel like they're being advertised to. But there's been other in-game ads in the past that have been a bit, uh, less seamless. Like Obama's 2008 presidential campaign having billboards in Burnout Paradise. This is real. Look it up. What a stupid world that we live in. There's also the Nissan Leaf charging station in SimCity from 2013. It was a day one paid DLC that allowed you to build these extremely cheap buildings that just radiated out pure happiness to all of the citizens of your city. Literally a pay to win building in a single player game. Classic EA, really. There's also a Monster Energy product placement in Death Stranding. It's not that bad, but it really does scream at you like, this is an advertisement. We are being paid to have Norman Reedus drink 
drink a monster. This video game was sponsored by Monster Energy. But the trick is, if it's subtle enough, it doesn't even have to be organic. Like how League of Legends tournaments place sponsors inside of Summoner's Rift during pro games. This ad is literally in-game. There's a MasterCard logo on the map, but it only shows up in pro games, so your average player doesn't even notice or even care that it's not a very subtle ad. There's also a Kiana skin where she's wearing clothes from a Louis Vuitton clothing line. It's not exactly seamless, but the skin is kinda cool and it's only one skin for one character, so it's not very intrusive either. Some companies also like to make their own branded games Games specifically to market their products. The most infamous example probably being Again, this is a real game. You didn't accidentally take a tab of acid before clicking the video. There's a Pepsi Man game. It's ridiculous and it's real and the world is a terrible place. But there was also a Muck Kids game for the NES that was a McDonald's branded game, and an SNES game called Cool Spot that was a 7-Up branded game. There was also a Burger King game called Sneak King for the Xbox and Xbox 360. These are much rarer nowadays than they were 20 years ago, because brands know full well that they won't get away with it. But video games are taking up more and more of a market share of the entertainment industry as time goes on, with video games being bigger than books, movies, live music, recorded music, newspapers, and audiobooks. And as this market share grows and grows, the desire to slip advertising into the medium gets bigger and bigger, which is why we've been seeing more and more video game adaptations than ever before. Yes, this too is an ad, whether you like to admit it or not. The TV or movie industry wins because they get to tap into the video game audience that they don't tap into otherwise, and the game company wins because they generate hype for their game for their current audience, and they also potentially gain a new audience that they wouldn't have reached before. And the better the adaptation, the better the advertisement, for both sides of the equation. Which is why we're seeing more and more of them nowadays than we ever did in the past. And they're being taken more seriously than they ever were before as well. So now people actually try and make them good instead of just making them on a low budget as fast as possible for profit. In fact, games have become so big that games will literally create product placement for other games. Like how there's League of Legends characters in Fortnite. The Smash Bros games are just a huge crossover event that doubles as advertisement for the other games featured. Just like every other crossover, in fact, where they decide to put Akuma in Tekken, or how Ronald McDonald is in Rivals. Wait, but these crossovers aren't really seen as ads by the player, because they're fun and enjoyable. People want to have these crossover events happen, they're exciting for fans of both franchises, so despite the fact that they are very much ads, they get away with it because the consumer likes it. But the same cannot be said about other product placements in games. The business world has very rapidly been waking up to the size of the video game market, and they've realised that they're a brand new niche to market towards. And market towards us, they have. Not every game has this sort of Thing. But just make sure to pay close attention whenever you see a brand featured in whatever game you're playing seemingly out of nowhere. Thanks for watching.